Well, hey guys, today I wanna to talk about filler for acne scars, specifically atrophic acne scars. If you've ever dealt with acne scarring, it's very distressing and it is something that doesn't just go away. It requires multiple different treatment approaches depending on a variety of factors. There are numerous different types of acne scars. You have different types that are raised or thickened, but for today's video, since we're focusing on filler, we're gonna be talking about atrophic acne scars, basically scars that leave a depression in the skin. Like when you turn to the side, you can see there's a dent there. They come in a few different types. The first is a rolling scar. Rolling scars have this kind of undulated wave-like appearance. They kind of give the skin a wavy texture, almost kind of look like the shape of a letter M depending on the side lighting. These acne scars are thought to be related to tethering of the scar tissue down to the deeper layers of the skin. They appear because bands of scar tissue form beneath the skin. Also, variable amount of volume loss related to the prior inflammation of the acne. Then you have boxcar scars. These are round or oval craters in the skin. They can have a reddish brown appearance or they can be the color of your skin. Last but not least, you have ice pick scars. As the name implies, these are a skin depression. It looks like basically you were stuck with an ice pick. They are small and deep. Of all of these types of atrophic scars, the rolling scar is probably the most amenable to treatment, but keep in mind, when it comes to treating atrophic scars, there is no one single best treatment. And for the most part, a couple of different treatment modalities need to be pursued to get the optimal results. Some of the most popular scar treatments for atrophic scars include subcision, microneedling, fractional laser resurfacing. And subcision and microneedling, they do have a relatively common risk of recurrence. They have their limitations, but they can be quite useful. Aside from that, you have a few other modalities. Retinoids, of course, applied to the skin can improve collagen production, soften the appearance of atrophic scars. They don't completely erase them. You also have a treatment that I have a whole video on that I'm rather fond of. It's called TCA Cross. Um, and of course, you have chemical peels of varying depths that can soften and smooth the skin surface the edges of the scars. Like I said, no one treatment is gonna be the answer. And importantly, treatments have to be tailored to you, the individual, and the types of scars that you actually have. Some scars are going to be more appropriate for certain treatments in comparison to others. The other thing to take into account when it comes to scars is that a lot of people actually have dispigmentation and overlying redness on top of the scars that makes it look like a scar, but those things need their own types of treatment. A lot of times scars can be challenging to evaluate if there's a lot of overlying hyperpigmentation or redness. So addressing those things first with either topical medication or um, different light and laser-based treatments to tackle those issues, then as those things start melting away, the underlying scar can be better evaluated and you can start to develop a plan for the patient for that particular atrophic scar. So what about filler? Well, the nice thing about filler for atrophic scars is that basically it's a way to get more precise volume restoration to the scar. With microneedling, fractional lasers, things of that sort that stimulate collagen, they do so broadly. But with filler, you are stimulating collagen just where you place the filler in the case of certain types of filler uh, known as biostimulatory filler. And also, you know, you, you just have a little bit more precise control. And with certain types of filler, you have the ability to reverse them if it's not quite right. Using filler to treat atrophic scars is not a new technique. It's been in practice for years and years, since about the 80s. There are several different types of fillers that can be classified as temporary, semi-permanent, and permanent. Temporary fillers include hyaluronic acid and collagen. Semi-permanent is gonna be the biostimulatory filler poly -L lactic acid, commonly known as Sculptra. As a side note, I have a whole video about Sculptra. Check that out, because I talk about what to expect with it. Then you also have calcium hydroxyapatite. That's a semi-permanent filler. It goes by the name Radius. Then as far as permanent filler, you have silicone, which is not really used. You also have uh, polyacrylamide and polymethyl methacrylate. Polymethyl methacrylate plus bovine collagen. It's known as Bellafil. It's actually FDA approved for the treatment of acne scars. Or Hyaluronic acid filler is one of the more widely used filler types for like cosmetic rejuvenation. Hyaluronic acid is naturally present in your extracellular matrix in the deeper layers of your skin. It's also present to a certain extent in your epidermis, 
But the thing about it, as far as an injectable, is it has a pretty short half-life. However, many hyaluronic acid fillers are cross-linked to help with their overall durability. While they're thought to be temporary, there's actually evidence that they are much more long-lasting than one might expect. In fact, there is evidence that they persist depending on the place that they've been injected for 10 years. Uh, it can be detected on MRI. Now, you're probably most familiar with hyaluronic acid filler for wrinkles, for rejuvenation, for cosmetic reasons. When it's placed in places for wrinkles, we know it can move around. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the technique of how it was injected the type of hyaluronic acid filler that was chosen, and the fact that with wrinkles, you have ongoing dynamic movement in that area, right? That pu can push the hyaluronic acid out of the space. In contrast, when you're talking about using this to an atrophic acne scar, it has a better chance of staying there and being more durable because you don't have that constant dynamic movement like you do with wrinkles. The risk of using hyaluronic acid filler to treat atrophic scars is you can get some bluish discoloration. You can get some blue nodules depending on how it's placed. So technique is super important. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, evaluating the scar is key to determining if it's a candidate for filler. And so to say, is filler good for scar? Well, it's like, what type of scar? How does it look? What is the nature of it? What else do you have going on on your face? So I wanna reiterate this. I, I can't emphasize this enough. When it comes to treating acne scars, what you have to keep in mind is that no treatment or combination of treatments will completely get rid of the scar. The other thing is there is no single or combination best approach to acne scars in general. The individual patient and their presentation has to be taken into account. The age of the scar, the patient's background skin type, their skin tone, how their skin responds to potential treatment options, um, if they have overlying other things, if they have ongoing active acne. Make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video because I will give you some tips on preventing acne from scarring. What are some things that we look for when deciding if a particular atrophic scar is a good candidate for filler? One simple test is just pinch the atrophic scar inward and if it dimples down, that's probably not a good candidate for filler. It suggests that there's some fibrous tissue down there anchoring the scar down deep, and so it's not going to fill up when you place the filler there. In contrast, if it kind of bubbles up a bit, um, then that's probably a good sign. Um, that's a negative dimple sign, and means that it's probably more of a better candidate. Then you have to take into account what the overlying epidermis looks like. Atrophic scars that have smooth, gentle, sloping borders are going to be a lot more amenable to treatment with filler. Those types of scars I'm showing you here are circled in green. Then you have those scars with more irregular edges and sort of a partially scarred base replacing some of the epidermis. Those types of scars are shown here circled in yellow. They may exhibit some partial improvement with filler. Then you've got scars with deep edges and white scar tissue at the base. Those are gonna be minimally impacted by filler. Probably not a good option there. Those are shown here circled in red. Not only does the scar have to be appropriate for filler, but the technique matters quite a bit. A micro droplet technique, placing the filler relatively high up in the dermis is, is important because if you place it too deep, what that's gonna do is just sort of bolster the scar tissue up and it's just gonna end up raising the entire scar. As you can imagine though, it's pretty uncommon for a patient to just have one type of acne scar. They don't all look the same. Like it's pretty common, typical for a patient to have a combination of not just different types of rolling scars, but also to have box car scars in there and to have ice pick scars. So then, you know, you also want to think about what am I going to pair with filler? It's unlikely that you're just going to get a good response using filler alone. That's unlikely to be enough to really get the optimal results. So you have to factor in what other treatments can benefit this patient. And the reason that's important is because that's gonna guide the order in which you pursue treatments. It may be best to go in with some type of resurfacing treatment first, whether that be a deep peel, uh, resurfacing laser, dermabrasion, 
to smooth out those epidermal edges. In some cases, this type of treatment can take a boxcar scar to more of a rolling scar, which as I said, the rolling scars tend to be a lot more amenable to improvement. Choosing to do energy-based devices first makes a lot of sense when we're talking about hyaluronic acid filler because um, as it turns out, some energy-based devices can hasten the clearance and, and destroy the hyaluronic acid filler so you lose it and kind of, you know, take several steps back. So it doesn't make sense to do that before those treatments. Um, all right, so what can you do to prevent acne scars in the first place? The number one thing to do to prevent acne scars is to get your acne treated. I mean, that is the reason for acne scarring is that it goes untreated or undertreated, maybe related to things outside of your control. Maybe you don't have good access to a dermatologist. Maybe you have access to a dermatologist, but you only have so many visits. You can't get in again with your schedule, your insurance changes. We all know the hurdles of access to any type of healthcare these days. Um, dermatology is no exception, but treating the acne is imperative to prevent scarring. So long as the acne is active, scar treatments, they are not necessarily going to be your best use of time. When it comes to acne treatments, there are a variety of really good over-the-counter FDA-approved acne treatments. Adapalene, salicylic acid, benzoyl peroxide. In the description box, I'm going to give you a link to a list of some of my favorites. And I have lots of videos on this channel talking about these ingredients, how they work, what to expect with them, how to use them. So that's a starting point. But you have to also understand that for many acne patients, especially those whose acne is primarily cysts and nodules or largely comprised of deep cysts and nodules, the over-the-counter topical acne treatments are not enough on their own in most cases, and you need some kind of prescription treatment to clear it up. All acne can go on to scar. It's not just the acne that's big cysts and nodules. The acne that is just blackheads and whiteheads, it's called comedonal acne. There's even you know, inflammation there on, and on the microscopic level and it can scar, so all acne can scar. So getting it treated and staying consistent with your treatments. Don't bail on your treatments prematurely just because your skin clears up. Make sure you follow the advice of your dermatologist in terms of how long to continue the treatments. Most acne treatments you need to keep using in order to control the acne, and that's the reason why they fail. You stop prematurely. If part of your acne treatment involves you being on birth control pills and you decide, I need to get off the birth control pills because I wanna try and conceive let your dermatologist know way in advance of stopping those. That way you can plan to start some other treatment to keep the acne under control while you come off birth control. Remember, a lot of acne treatments that you apply to your skin or that you take by mouth, they take some time to start working. So don't wait until you have to stop the birth control pills and don't wait for the acne to come back to pursue treatment. Get on it now by seeing your dermatologist. Don't pick your acne. I know this can be really challenging. Some people pick their acne absentmindedly. Picking is a big reason for scarring. If you do struggle with picking your skin, I want you to watch my video on skin picking disorder. I give a lot of tips and tricks in that video to stop the habit, um, but don't feel bad if you do it. A lot of people do, and most people don't even realize they're doing it at some point. Um, it can be a coping mechanism for stress, so definitely check that video out because picking definitely can lead to scarring, hyperpigmentation, yeah, and it, it keeps it so that your acne has a very hard time going away. Don't use harsh scrubs on your acne. Don't use any kind of tools like the comedone extractors. That's a big reason for people winding up with acne scars is you know trying to take matters into their own hands, quite literally, with these tools that you can buy. Um, I've seen a lot of cases of acne scars from those because not all acne is amenable to um, being extracted. And so don't, don't use those. Um, also, um, I cannot emphasize enough how valuable sun protection is for acne healing. UV rays from the sun, they are immunosuppressive and they slow down the healing process and they put you at greater risk for poor healing and scar formation as well as post-acne, hyperpigmentation, and redness. So make sure you're protecting your skin with a broad spectrum sunscreen, SPF 30 or higher, reapply it every two hours while you are outdoors. 
Also wear sun protective clothing, hats, seek shade when you are outside, and don't stay outdoors too long in the midday hours. That's when the UV rays are most intense. All right, y'all. So that's what I wanted to talk about for today's video with regards to filler for acne scars. Again, I want to reiterate, there is no best acne scar treatment. Filler is one tool in the armamentarium. It can be really, really helpful for some people totally useless for other people. All depends on what type of acne scar you are dealing with. And it's probably not the only thing that would be helpful, probably a combination of other things as well. Now on the end slide, I'm gonna link my video all about TCA Cross for acne scars. Definitely watch that one next, because that's another treatment modality that might be offered to you either by itself or you know in combination with filler. So check that one out next, but if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Mm -hmm.